Let me give you a quick breakdown of what's going on with Iran and the U.S. As I'm sure some of you are concerned. So we've just lost three service members from a one-way attack drone strike over on the Jordanian and Syrian border, very close to Iraq. Three dead, 25 injured. Several of those 25 seriously injured to the point they had to be evacuated to Landstuhl over in Germany. So you're talking about you know, three families being notified of the death of their loved one. And then a good number of these other guys that have been wounded, they're going to have lifelong injuries of traumatic brain injury. All sorts of freaking crap coming their way. Uh, be praying for our military. Be praying for our military leaders that they would not be putting their men in harm's way if we're left defenseless. We're playing a game of Russian, Iranian roulette right now. And to really understand this, you've got to see the tentacles that Iran has spread. After we pulled out of Iraq and we left this power vacuum, remember how ISIS poured in and ISIS dominated Iraq and then uh, it was this big campaign to, to crush ISIS, which we, we pretty much did under Donald Trump with really without much loss of life on our side. We just bombed the smithereens out of these guys and they crawled back into their holes. And then whenever the Iranians popped up, Trump would do something to where they, they seriously started to regret ever messing with us. Uh, case in point, when we, when we conducted the airstrike on Soleimani, on an airstrip inside Iraq, and we turned Qasem Soleimani into a pile of steaming grease. That that just sends a message of, don't freaking screw with us. We're not the ones that you want to play with, right? Well, all that's out the window now. And, and because we pulled out of there, and we have this giant power vacuum, but we still have little, little itty bitty targets for these guys to attack. Because, and I don't know why we're there. I mean, I don't know what we're doing with troops in Syria, troops in Jordan, troops still in Iraq, as they're surrounded by nothing but Hezbollah, which is owned, armed, funded, trained, and directed and controlled by the Iranians. So after we create this power vacuum, Iran funds, arms, and trains and directs Hezbollah. And Hezbollah has a sweeping scale of control over Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq, which basically that gives Iran geographical dominance over those four countries, like four countries just hanging over the Middle East. And then the Iranians have armed, funded, trained, and direct the Houthis down there in Yemen. And you see these Yemeni throwbacks from the sixth century they're shooting anti-tank ballistic missiles at our, at our uh, or anti-ship ballistic missile, missiles, I should say, that are sitting out there in the Red Sea. You know, this, this is all on the back of, we just lost two Navy SEALs. They're still missing. They're, they're presumed dead. They're declared deceased. These poor guys are probably at the bottom of the ocean down there, never to be recovered. And... And it's while they're going after these Houthis that Iran is directly responsible for, for every single thing that they do. And so now what we got is this stupid game of chess where Hezbollah in Iraq has taken responsibility for the death of our three service members and the wounding of 25. Okay, Hezbollah takes the cake on that one. And then what that does is it prevents us from hitting directly the Iranian regime, okay? So what they can do, what they're allowed to do is they can target the U.S. service member, the uniformed service member underneath the American flag. It is carte blanche. You can do it. You can attack us. You can kill us. But if you make sure that you kill us by way of, by proxy of Hezbollah or Yemen, then we don't get to hit Iran back directly. So we have this chess game where they can move their pawns, but we can never target that queen or that king. And it, 
I mean, we're basically fighting with one hand behind our back or, or both hands, I should probably say. So I, I think that this continues to play out and it's extremely dangerous because it's only going to get worse. And, and every time that we let Iran do that, it gets more dangerous in the future because they go, we just killed three American military members. Next time we can kill five. Next time we can kill 20. We can just keep pushing that envelope. And America, America's politicians and the media, they will accept what we do because we do it all by proxy. We have someone else always doing our dirty work when it's really us. They, they are really doing their own dirty work. It, they just have to put a different uniform and a different like corporation over the person doing the dirty work. So, you know, don't ever go into this thinking that the Iranians are stupid. Those guys are freaking smart. They exactly know how to outfox Joe Biden, uh, the Pentagon, all, all of the staffers up there in D.C. They, they, know, they know how to keep those guys bent over a barrel. There's no doubt about that. There's probably a lot of dirty underplay in all this. I'm sure people have been paid off um, so that certain things are allowed to happen. You know, never underestimate how dirty the American politician could be. So with all of that being said, you know, this is a time where it's very dangerous. It can be very costly to be in the United States military. No matter what happens, no matter who's in charge and who's leading all of this, we still need good men and women in uniform. We still need godly, courageous men out there that are willing to put themselves in harm's way to protect our interests. The sad fact of the matter is that the ones that are directing and controlling our interests are not of the same caliber as the man in uniform. So I'm in prayer for our guys out there deployed right now. This is a very dangerous time to be out there. Um, remember those families, remember those men out there. And, and for you men that are going that way, you need to be in the word of God. You need to be seeking the Lord every day because you may come up against a battle that is too strong for you. And you're going to have to depend upon your relationship with Christ to get you through that day, man. So just saying that to you guys, letting you know kind of the situation going on and what we can expect in the days to come as, as we see an increase of attacks against our forces and you see a feckless administration that doesn't, that, that is not even capable of telling the truth about what's actually going on. So it's, it's a sad day for the United States of America. Um, I pray that our best days are, are before us. We'll see about that.